continuing with this, and this is very important, of course, we're doing a book study, and this is uh, the title is Living Faith. Mm -hmm. And again, this is a book study of the book of James. And uh, we're going through um, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, of course, sections to, for us to be able to understand what is going on here. Uh, and, and this is a very, very serious uh, tone from uh, mm -hmm. James. And let's read that in starting on verse 11. Only two verses, Jen, but yet very powerful. I'm going to go start right away because there's a lot of things that I'm going to cover for this discussion yes. today. Mm -hmm. So I want you to fasten your seatbelt and I want you to prepare and also I want you to be ready. All right. Mm -hmm. So verse 11, brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judges it when you judge the law. You are keeping it, yeah. you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. I'm going to explain a little bit more of that. Sounds a little tricky, but I'm going to explain it a bit later. There is only one lawgiver and judge, and um, the one who is able to save and destroy, but you, who are you to judge your neighbor? All right? So this is very interesting. Again, in reading texts like this, the key is always for us to be able to understand the context is you know, for us to be able to understand this is to know the context, mm -hmm. all right? So I got lost a little bit there. Mm -hmm. The key, because again, this is so easy for us to be able to take this verse and use it out of context. That's why context is key, mm -hmm. all right? Say that with me, context is key. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for us to understand this is that we have to go back to chapter four because we're now in 11 and 12, but for us to be able to understand this, we have to look at the whole totality of chapter 4, which is now we're going to look at verses 1 to 10. I'm not going to go read it line by line, but I'm going to give you the context, the flow, for us to be able to understand where James is coming from. As you could see, this is a very strong message from James. And as we, are, as I have, as we have read this, heard this last Sunday, let me just say this, okay? This message, message touches all of us. I just want to say this on, on the onset. We are all guilty about this. Mm -hmm. We are. I am, Jen, Elijah, Sean, everybody. In one point in our lives, we have judged people. Yes. Slandering, judging. It's just yes. in varying degrees. And also, I would say this. We have maybe at least, at least also in slander people. And I'm going to explain why later. So that being said, it may seem as you read this, like the first question is, what is James talking about here? Mm -hmm. Where is he coming from? So for us to understand that, it may seem like when you read chapter 4, and I want you to open your Bible for this, either a soft copy or a hard copy is very important. Because in chapter 4, James starts with this, he's, he's presenting, he's still continuing to present his case when what he started in chapter 4. In verse 1, you see here that says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Mm -hmm. So, verse 1, though they come from the desires that battles within you. Mm -hmm. So, that is the, the whole theme here. James is addressing something that is happening to the churches, which is because this is distributed to many churches, not just one church. Because here's, there's fighting and quarreling. In short, as we have preached this many weeks ago, there's conflict that is going on. Okay? James emphasizes, you continue to read the verse, that it comes from what? Our selfish uh, desires or our uh, uh, evil desires, according to some, some translation. But also, James was point to quick up that such behavior, as you continue reading this, is that in verse 4, is that this is what he calls a worldly behavior connoting to or related to being friends with the world. And what is that? As we have studied that in a few weeks, being friends with the world, that means aligning our value, our belief to the ways of the world. So this is very important. This fighting and quarreling and conflicts, James likened this to what? To a uh, worldly behavior. It's a worldly attitude because he expects Christians in a manner who would act in a different manner. So hence, he wrote that here. So as such, James offered the solution here. That's why last week we talked about this and what is the solution? Not this Sunday, but last, last Sunday. The solution that uh, James offers is that, that you know, a solution to resolve fighting and quarreling is number one first that we need to get right with God. Mm -hmm. That's why he mentioned in verse uh, 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 6, he gives grace more grace. God opposes the proud, gives grace to the humble. And next, the next 7 to 10 is all about submission. Submit yourself then to God. This is very important. 
Because to humble ourselves, that means to submit before God. That's verse 6 to 10. That is the first solution that James pre uh, uh, presents here. So you want this fighting and quarreling to stop? <sighs> James noticed that it starts with you submitting or humbling your, yourself before, the uh, uh, before God. James also also quick to point that such behavior, okay, because if we don't, then we are prideful or we are proud people. And then he moves here, and, and as you read, and then with the, here's what happened. To humble ourselves to God and also to submit before God, then we could get right with people. Mm -hmm. Because if we are not right with God, most of the time we are not right with other people. Let me say that again. If we are not right with God, most of the time we are not right with other people. Mm -hmm. It spills over. So that's why the first suggestion, the first uh, uh, solution of James is we come to the Lord. Because when we come to God, then we could hear from the Lord. And now we are going to switch or follow or shift our friendship with the, worldly, with the world. And then instead of that, then connect to God. So here's what it is. Why is this important? Because, let me just put this in, 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 on the screen now, a worldly and proud person is often quick to criticize others. Mm -hmm. hmm. Let's read that again. A worldly and proud person is often quick to criticize others. So James is telling you and me here that if we are aligned to the world, being friends to the world, then we are proud people. Usually, here's the fruit. We're often quick to criticize. We're often quick to judge. And here's what it is. We're often quick, often quick to slander people. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? That's why he starts in verse 11. Brothers, do not slander one another. Because you're wondering, where is he coming from? Mm -hmm. Because fights and quarrels starts with those words. Slandering. Lying. So why? I'm going to explain that later. So now, there's some truth here. Several truths that James is trying to impart to the believers. Before, in his time, and also to us today. And here are the three things that I'm going to share to you. We're going to answer several questions here. For us to understand what James is saying here. And the truth that he's trying to communicate to all of us. Jen, any questions so far? Any reaction? Mm -hmm. No, that's why I was waiting. Hmm, how, how, how is all this connected when we're saying about um, verses 1 and then you're moving through it? Um, yeah, then the connection is really when we are in friendship with the world, then the natural result of that, you know, is just really being critical of others. Yeah. And so I think that's why um, we are all um, guilty of yep. being critical with others is because, you know, we have been at one point in our lives, right, being friends with the world. And sometimes... And aligning to its value. Exactly. And sometimes we are no longer of the world, but yet the value that we practice, it's, it's still a worldly value. Yeah. And that we have to be careful. Yeah. So now, what is the truth? The first question is, what... Here's the, what it is. Here's what James is trying to say here. Is slander is a sin. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Here's the first truth that you need to understand that connects to all of this is that slander is a sin. Mm -hmm. All right? Let's read the verse. Brothers, do not slander one another. That's an NIV 84. Mm -hmm. So slander is not just a minor sin, by the way. It is a very dangerous sin. Mm -hmm. We take it so lightly but it's not light as far as God is concerned. Mm -hmm. Look at the translations here in ESV. There's a word by word for word translation, ESV, and the dynamic equivalence, of course, is NIV. Here's what it said. Do not speak evil against one another. Mm -hmm. This is a very strong command. Do not. There's an imperative here. Do not speak evil. Do not slander one another. Why? Because... It is God. You're going to see that in the Old Testament, God had mentioned this several times in, in the book of Proverbs and in, in, in many, many scriptures. And we're going to talk some of them today. All right. But here's what it is. Slander is a sin. It's a dangerous sin. It is a dangerous sin. We take it so lightly, but it is a dangerous sin. 
I think the first question then is, now if slander is a sin, the first question then is, what is slander? Okay? Mm -hmm. And again, when you read different translations, it would say, uh, he's speaking evil against other people or criticizing them. So I think we're going to lose the, uh, the depth of the meaning. If, but I think the original word was slander. And it, here's what it is. And let me just put this on the screen. It means what? Maligning someone or damaging his reputation or her reputation by sharing false or deliberately misleading information about a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting meaning, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is the word slander. It means maligning someone or damaging someone's reputation by sharing, here's the key word, false or deliberately misleading information about a person. So what do you mean by that? But the word that James uses here, it's a little bit more broader, okay? It includes any form of criticism from, you know, from selfish motives. This is not just because, again, some people would say, oh, I'm just correcting. I'm just, I'm going to explain that a bit. But this is very straight to the point. Maligning someone, damaging someone's reputation by sharing false or de deliberately misleading. Sometimes this might be the truth, but it's misleading. Mm -hmm. Ah, mm -hmm. so that's why... Here's what it means. In other words, what you're saying may be true, but the reason you're sharing it is to make yourself look good and to put other person in the bad light. That's slander. Mm -hmm. Still, it might be the truth, but if your motive is to what? Elevate yourself and to put down and to destroy someone, that is what you call speaking evil against someone. Mm -hmm. Because there is that. So there are different examples of this. So far, so good. You're mm -hmm. tracking? Yeah. All right. So because this definition is uh, very important. And by the way, uh, I got that from a commentary, of course, reading it to you and, and, and not from my own, you know, things that I have put up. And again, as we read this, all of us are guilty. Mm -hmm. If you're watching right now, you have done that in one part of your life. All of us. All right. Or if you're watching later, if you don't want to watch live. Okay. It's still applicable to all of us. So now, let me share to you six, some examples of how we could slander people. Here's the first one. We slander people in several ways. Number one, by blatant false accusation. Mm -hmm. So look at that. It means maligning someone damaging by sharing false testimony, mm -hmm. false news, false everything. So that is false accusation straight to the point. Mm -hmm. When we share lies, speculations and hearsay about someone okay that without verifying that is blatant false accusation by the way the bible calls that slander mm -hmm. that's why it's very interesting because this is very rampant in our culture now so now there's what you call fake news right mm -hmm. so now there's no more verifying i was we were just watching the news last night there was this one anchor from cbs who was she was texting something that she didn't even verify if that information was true because uh, a, a, a one uh, source told that to her this is an anchor by the way and and then she didn't verify because again you you major in uh, broadcasting right mm -hmm. in up and in any news there's got to be two what you have to collaborate that with two sources. You have to confirm, confirm your facts, your facts mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. So this is what it is. So now it's now acceptable because of the culture. That we could just throw away fake news, but we are without any feeling of consequences or without any regret that we have done that. We have to be careful. That is not biblical. Mm -hmm. That is not. If the culture is doing that, that is not what God called us to do. Mm -hmm. All right? Also, another way to slander people, and I know some of you are watching, you could, you could ask questions or you could uh, chime in, please. Here's another one, by exaggeration of faults that are true. Mm -hmm. That means what you're sharing is true, but yet you are exaggerating that to make people what, worse than what they really are. Or their faults worse than what that really is. Mm -hmm. So it might be the truth. But you're exaggerating it to make someone look bad. Mm -hmm. That's slander. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Wow. So that means if we are, even if what we're sharing is true, but you are exaggerating to make the person look more, you know, worse than what, it, what that really is. Yeah. That's what you call also slander. Mm -hmm. okay. 
right. Here's another one. <laughs> and while you're processing this, by what? Blatant, a lot of false accusation. That one is by exaggeration. This one is by distortion of faults that are true. That means you're distorting the truth. What? Bending of the truth to create and produce the narrative or the outcome that you want. Mm -hmm. That is still slander. Mm -hmm. Ah, That's why when we say, oh, it's not just a lie, it's a white lie. Hmm. Be careful. So you might be telling the truth, but you are bending it mm -hmm. to influence people. To what? To receive the narrative that you have formed. That is a slander. Because if it is the truth, that's it. It's the truth and nothing but the truth. Mm -hmm. So even in our court system, you know, it is innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. So here's what it is. Slander is typically not about what is true, but what about what is, but, but about lies, exaggeration, distortion of truth that would actually stick with people. Mm -hmm. Whatever tidbits people would embrace or believe or begin to question, then slander works. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. You're throwing whatever sticks. So that people could pick up whatever they could pick up. Then that's the start of slander. So the point is not telling the truth. It's mm -hmm. creating narrative to paint someone in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. hmm. Any comments so far? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's like looking back at my, you know, just of course not looking at other people, yeah, right? Please, self just like what we have talked about when we did this series, it's a self-reflection. This is not a way for us to go and look at other people. Oh, so-and-so is uh, slandering this so-and-so. No, 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 no. Again, just like when we started with this series, the book of James is a practical application. And first, we have to start within. Mm -hmm. don't, look with, don't look at other people. Look at ourselves. Have we done those? Mm -hmm. Have we blatantly shared a lie? Or maybe you're a Christian. You just exaggerated the truth. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we have distorted the truth mm -hmm. to paint a picture or a narrative that we want. So, Jen, any comment? Yeah, well, um, you know, we wouldn't, uh, you know, if you're going to be a technical person, you're, you're saying, I'm not lying. I always tell the truth. That's right. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, now there's a, there's something else in there. Because uh -huh. when you're saying that, you know, people tell the truth, but they exaggerate it and they distort it, then that still doesn't, that's still sin in it's God's not. eyes. It's still not right in the eyes of God. You know, okay. and so, you know, because sometimes, you know, we are, you know, from personal experience, you know, you always say, you know, I'm a truth teller. I always tell the truth. But I guess this is not just about the truth or the lie, but it is about, you know, you, you know. It is about the truth and the lie. It is, yeah, what, what, what am I about to say is it, it's not just about the... The, the information the that information. we perceive as the truth. Uh-huh, like being technical, like, hey, I did not lie, I spoke the truth, but, you know, with the... Uh, additionals or the subtractions or the distortions or the twists that you put or the spin that you put into it really you know that that makes you know it just makes things very more like uh, how do I feel I feel like I have to be careful more yeah. and with what I say yes and even if it's the truth if it is the truth then you have nothing to fear mm -hmm. but I think what we need to watch out for is this are we exaggerating the truth? And why? And why? Mm -hmm. Are we distorting the truth? And why? why? Because at the very heart of this is the motive. Exactly. And that's why when you talk about slander, there is a deeper motive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That God is, that's why God hates it. Yeah, there is a, the there underlying motive. The underlying motive. Yeah. So there is this, this is very intentional, telling the truth, okay? And here's uh, some few comments here. Anything that stems from bitterness, hate, resentment, jealousy, or pride will be exaggerated. Yes! So true. Mm. Anything, okay, that, that comes from that will be exaggerated. 
it, we don't have to go far. We are. So, for example, when you offended me, I exaggerated. You did this, and then after sitting down and we talk, like you shot at me, you said this, like, but I didn't, or you didn't say those, and I'm like, hmm. Because again, when you're hurt, you try to exaggerate things. Mm -hmm. All of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, some few comments here. I love it that people are commenting. It sounds like slander revolves around self-centeredness, intentional manipulation, and a kind of motivation that does not honor God. Yes! yes. Nice. Beautiful mm -hmm. description there, Jane. It is what it is. It yeah. centers on self. Yeah. That's why I want you to go read this. Open your Bible to Proverbs chapter 6. It's not on the screen because, again, there's so many things going on here. But uh, why? Okay, Proverbs 6, starting on, I'm opening mine. And uh, we need to go here and understand what the Bible is saying here. Look at this. There are, starting on verse 16, Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Some other translation, abomination. Okay, the Lord detests this a haughty eye, a lying tongue, lying tongue, lying tongue is part of slander. But haughty eyes is what? Proud, being pride, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush to, unto evil. Well, look at this, a false witness who pours out lies and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers or who causes division among. Three out of the six here or seven is about slander. Mm -hmm. That's the description. Yeah. Lying, false witness, stirring up mm -hmm. to cause division. division. Yeah. Actually, that we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to read a few comments. Yes. Bless, my bless says, there will, will be always two sides of the story and we better be careful when we receive a story not to believe and react at once. I understand. 100% yes. believe that. Yes. Yeah. Lara says, your daughter, mommy bless. Back to back. The thing is, there are other truths about people. But before speaking, now I would pray for, I would pray or ask myself, why am I inclined to talk about this specific truth about a specific person? What's my motive? Yes, mm -hmm. because again, you you hit it, all of you, because underneath all of this, that's why this is the definition. Yeah. It's the heart. Now we're going to talk about that. This is now going to go deeper. Please, don't think about other people. Just reflect about yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, which is I have done as I am preparing for this, actually, as before sharing. Mm -hmm. So, the heart of the problem. At the very core of slander is this. Slander is arrogance of heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. Remember when James said, God opposes the proud but gives grace okay. to the humble. Ah. Mm -hmm. So because at the very heart of slander is actually the arrogance of the heart or arrogance of heart. There's pride involved mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Oh, we're just making this up. Are we? Look at verse 11. Brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it but sitting judgment on it. So that means you are what? Slander, I want you to listen up. Slander and judgment go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Actually, there are cousins. <laughs> Where you find one, you will find the other. Mm -hmm. They tag along. <laughs> okay? For James, slander and judging is what? A heart issue. Why is it a heart issue? Because out of the abundance of the heart, mm -hmm. the mouth speaks. Or... Let's contemporize, you know, let's do this now in our culture. Out of the fingers of our hands, the heart tweets mm -hmm. or posts in social media, whatever. So this is the application now. And what is pride? And here's the problem here is because when we begin to usurp, usurp, that means to take over God or take God's authority and sit in sinful judgment over others. That's what he was saying here. Because he said, anyone who speaks against his brother judges him, speaks against the law and judges it. That means when you are beginning to slander, you're speaking against the very law that God enacted and you're actually trying to be a judge. Okay? You're judging others. Look at this. As James, and James is very clear, when we slander and judge others, we are criticizing God's law according to the text. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Speak what? 
against the law. Mm -hmm. Number two is not that acting as if we are a better judge of the law. Mm -hmm. That means what you by means by by sitting in judgment on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So very important here. So why is this important? Because when we slander others, we assume a what? A position or a posture that you are what? Above other people, either spiritually or morally. We view ourselves higher than them. That's why we want to project this, that we are morally and spiritually superior than, superior than other. Okay? That's why we look at them very lowly. In short, slandering and judging others elevates us over others, it makes us feel good that we are better than they are. Mm. Mm. Okay. Wow. So that's why at the very heart of this is actually pride. Mm -hmm. Let's go back on the times that even we have gossiped or slander or maligned someone. So for example, oh, so and so, do you know what happened to this? You know, you know, Elijah is, I saw Elijah so, and without all verifying the facts and just here, why are we sharing those? Because we're actually unintentionally telling people, so is so is bad, and I'm not like that person. So let's read some few more. I know you're thinking. So let's read some few comments here. This is from uh, Christia. Okay, so Christia says, Because our words must be life-giving, we, we must never use truth as a weapon. We must, ask yourself, we must ask yourself why you are telling the truth. Okay, yes. Tim Keller. Yeah, from Tim Keller, of course. So this is very important, as you could see. So because at the very heart of this, there is that arrogance of the heart. Mm -hmm. And what, where is that arrogance coming? When we judge people, we're saying that, you know, that's like what I've mentioned. Number one is that, according to him, we are criticizing God. So why are you criticizing it? Because you're using it against your brother. And not only that, is that also we are acting as if we are a better judge of the law. Because when you start judging people, that means that sole responsibility alone is given to someone who could judge fairly. Mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. and the last time I check I am not one mm -hmm. let's read some few comments here yeah um, Selsno says God clearly says that we shouldn't judge so that we will not be judged mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jane says okay before we speak we should be more mindful about the kind of influence our words are gonna have on the people who are listening and the person who is be being spoken about it takes a lot of humility to pause before speaking. We need to understand that we have the ability to misuse the information we have mm -hmm. and we need God's help to guide us in what we do with that information. Good. Mm -hmm. And in line with that, then the question then, so what if, Jen, so, so that means if I'm going to correct someone, mm -hmm. is that slander? Is that judging? Mm -hmm. So I don't think so. Because again, the motive is very important on this. So let's talk about that. So let me just go point this out. I think for us to be able to differentiate, because again, I don't want you to say that, oh, that means I cannot, you know, correct someone. I cannot, you know, because again, speak the truth in love. Uh, again, the Bible gives us many parameters on that, how to correct people, how to, okay. So let me just say, okay, this, the difference between slander or doing w w versus healthy correction. Of sin all right healthy correction of sin when you're correcting someone versus slander here's the first the first one slander the whole again the motive is that you're better morally and spiritually and though usually it comes from that the heart is to condemn whether we like it or not condemning others mm -hmm. that's why when you hear someone you know uh, someone either exaggerating the truth telling lies about someone come on you're not encouraged no one jumps up and down about that information no that's you know because it's condemning but correction or healthy correction is speaking the truth in love to others so that means you would take the moment to speak the truth in love then how they react and if you speak the truth in love 
it's not on me. But my goal is to speak the truth in love. And as a pastor for many years, some people would receive that and some people would not. Mm -hmm. But yet I am called to speak the truth in love because I am called to correct. One of my functions as a pastor is to correct. One of our functions as friends of our fellow believers is to correct them with love. Very important. Mm -hmm. So when we see people using, slandering, if you are not correcting, we are what? Actually uh, implicit mm -hmm. into that process because we are not yeah. correcting. Yeah. The other one is slander. The motive is to destroy, hence the meaning. Mm -hmm. Destroying the reputation, destroying, you know, that's what it is. But the goal of uh, uh, correction is not to destroy but to build up. A healthy correction of speaking the truth in love is to build up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Building up others. So there is the difference there. Okay? So now, according to James, when he said, now the information that we use, the question is, as I have learned with Pastor Steve, from Pastor Steve rather, is that when we start sharing information, two questions, part of the solution, part of the problem. If neither of them is part of that, then they should not know the information. So that's why... When we go beyond outside, because again, when you read the book of uh, the New Testament, there is parameters in that. Speaking to that person face to face, and then after that, bringing someone within the group and that exposing that to the whole church. Mm -hmm. That is not slander. It is within the parameters of correction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's read some few comments here. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. know. A lot of people. All right, yeah. let's so go. Lara commented on Jane's post. She says, Mary Jane Davis, going back to understanding the power of the tongue, it can set the direction of one's life. Words have a way. Yes. Oh, yeah. And it's why... It's coming all... It's all coming together. It's all coming together, as you could see with James, because this is very important to him. As you could see, because when we start destroying the person person's reputation... You are actually destroying the person's character. Yeah. And according to the Bible, a good name is something that a person has. So when you start destroying that, you're actually destroying the person. Yeah. That's why God doesn't like this. Mm -hmm. Because number one, we don't have the capacity nor the ability to judge fairly. That's why we can't. Because we cannot know the motive of people. Mm -hmm. So that's why. Let's cover up the, the question of malicious intent here. Because again, the slander and all of this, there is, what, what's that arrogance of heart? Because there is a malicious intent, okay? With statements or words. So that's why here's how people start. And we should be watching out for this. Mm -hmm. Some people say this. Now, stop me if I am wrong, but... Mm -hmm. Tell that if that's your friend. I'll stop you right now. Don't continue. Because, again, what happens here is that sometimes we come up with creative statements to cover, okay, our malicious intent. Yeah. Another one. Now, I don't mean to be critical, mm -hmm. but actually, but you're ready to be critical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I shouldn't say this about him or her, but that means you should not, if that's the intro. I really like so-and-so, like I really like Elijah as a person, but be careful. Mm -hmm. Because again, watch out. What's the intention? Mm -hmm. What's the motive? Mm -hmm. Here's the problem with slander is that we elevate ourselves and we look down on others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess it boils down to our hearts. <laughs> Yes. It boils down to the heart. Thank you for saying that. Because going back to what I've said from the very beginning, remember, from fighting and quarreling, the main issue is the heart. Mm -hmm. And hence, slander comes from words because the issue is still within the heart. The heart. Yeah. It goes back to selfish desire, just like what Jen, uh, Jane said, self-centeredness mm -hmm. and selfishness. And evil desires. And evil desires. Mm -hmm. So, that's why. Are we better lawmaker and better judge than God? I don't think so. Now, we're not even close. Mm -hmm. And the problem with this is that we can't judge motives. Right. That's like when you see someone do something, and we see, okay, so-and-so did this. Maybe because. 
like motives. Be careful. Yeah. Because you can never know the motive of people. Yeah. Only God does. Yeah. That is like adding an interpretation. An interpretation. To the the fact that you are the information that you have and you're interpreting the person's motive based on their action or mm-hmm. what they said or what they did yeah. but you can never know it unless you talk to the person yes that's why the biblical parameter is to talk to that person face to face all right let's read this from Jacqueline okay. it is tempting to retaliate when someone slanders slanders against you and start going around recruiting others to hate you but I've learned if we surrender the hurt, pain to God, and seek God for healing instead of retaliate, yield, God vindicates. Yes! yes. Mm-hmm. Which is coming on to this next verse that I'm going to read. Mm-hmm. Look at verse 12. There is only one lawgiver, and that means that is not you, because every time you judge, you're creating a new law. <laughs> right. And also, and judge, and that is not us, because that's God. Yeah. The one who is able to save and destroy. I think the last time I checked, I am not able to save and destroy the right way that the way God does. So, but you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Straight to the point. This is a rhetorical question, but very straight to the heart. Mm-hmm. Who are you? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Only God knows the heart and motives of men, and only God can perfectly apply the law, not mm-hmm. us. Only God knows all the facts, not you, mm-hmm. not me. Only God knows the motives driving any person. So that means only God can lay down the law, not me. That's why what Jackie says, God vindicates. So that's very important as well. So now the question is, as we are waiting for the vindication, can we trust God's judgment? Yeah. I think that's the question because sometimes when we're waiting for the vindication is that, Lord, vindicate me. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Would that mean that, Lord... But we're not saying this, right? That something bad might happen to them. Something bad might happen to their family. I hope not. Mm -hmm. Because when we're saying vindicate, that means God is going to use the judgment that is proper to, that he sees fit to extend to that person. Sometimes it's grace. Sometimes it's mercy. Sometimes it's consequences. That is God's what? Choice. Not ours. Mm -hmm. Him. Why? Why? Because he's the one that is a lawgiver yeah. and a judge, mm-hmm. not you and I. Mm-hmm. That's why this is tough. Yeah. That's why, let's go back. In God's eyes, pride and undisciplined tongue are just as damaging as inflicting physical harm. Mm-hmm. That's why God doesn't like slandering and the cousin is judgment or judging and another cousin is gossip. Mm-hmm. The three hang out together. Mm-hmm. When there is this in any discussion, sin is abounding. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Any comments so far? Mm-hmm. So any comment from anyone watching? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of you today. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> as I could see. Yeah, this so, is a good discussion, you guys. As I could see, there's about 52 that are watching. Usually our average is about 40 plus. So there's a lot watching today. So for whatever purpose, so I hope you're learning today. And again, for personal reflection, please. Mm -hmm. Not looking at others, not thinking about others, only in our own personal walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? All right. So now, what's the fruit? So we knew the, the meaning is clear. Slander is a sin. It's a sin. It's a dangerous sin. It's not a subtle sin. It's a dangerous sin. You're going to know now when because we're going to talk about the fruit. Number two is that, you know, the heart of this, the heart of a slander is what? Arrogance of heart. Mm-hmm. There's pride in this. That's why we gossip about people. We malign them and everything. So, no. And we think we're better. We think we're better. And we think they deserve the judgment that we think that is fitting for them. Actually, this is what verse... Uh, 11 is saying at the latter part we're trying to give the justice okay mm-hmm. that we think that they deserve but yet we relent God mm-hmm. you know giving it to us see the, the whole so we're asking Lord do this you know but we're, sometimes we're not articulating it that way but yet when it comes to our mistake when it comes to the things that we have done we are pleading for grace and mercy but yet for others we are what uh, uh, declaring God's judgment. We have to be careful. Yeah. 
we have to be careful. That's all I'm saying here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So some comments here. Um. Okay. Wait, wait, let me see. I missed something. There we go. That's okay. Jane. Jane says, uh, Alex and I agree that we are both ready for personal <laughs> prayer now. <laughs> gonna get there in a few minutes Lara says I was just thinking the same that I have a lot in my heart to surrender to God Amen yeah uh, Christian says thank you Pastor Robert if I'm not part of the problem and not part of the solution I should not be knowing it it's just it's one of the things that I've learned from you and I always try to apply it it made my life more peaceful it's uh, faster for God to fix problems between people when no one meddle or add fuel to it. Exactly. That's exactly. 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 Mm -hmm. So now what's the fruit? Mm -hmm. What's the fruit now? So we're going to talk about this. Geraldine said, I hear you. Time to repent. I know. All of us. That's why yes. I started from the very beginning. We are all guilty. I know. Yeah. Me, Jen, Elijah, everyone who's watching right now, who's be watching later. If you don't see that, then I pray that God would humble you mm -hmm. for you to see that mm -hmm. for all of us who doesn't see mm -hmm. okay yeah so a lot of people are already confessing praise God <laughs> we're gonna okay. receive grace and mercy today so uh, Penn Penn said, says, same here uh, Len, uh, Jerlene says time to repent as mm -hmm. well I hear ya uh, Dals Sagrado says thank you pastor for clearly explaining what slander is I'm guilty as charged Jeffrey Pablo says um Think God before you say something to someone. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, Clang says it is damaging not just to the object of slander, but also to the people around them who are more than likely to retaliate in their behalf. Yes. Uh -huh. And that's why that's the third and point. And here's the third point. <laughs> great transition. The great transition for everything that you wrote. The fruit. What is the fruit? So if we're saying that, oh, we're not slandering, oh, I'm not gossiping, oh, I'm not, you know, exaggerating the truth, I'm not judging people, but the fruit would tell it. Mm -hmm. The fruit is what's gonna, it's the, the evidence. And here's what it is. Slander destroys relationships. Mm -hmm. It destroys relationship. That's why God doesn't want it. Look at this. And for this one, I have to go back, again, because we started in chapter 4, verse 1. I have to go back to chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. This is where James started. Look at this. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Do they come from the desires that battles within you? Let me just say this. Listen to me now, and I don't want you to misinterpret what I'm going to say. Very important here. All right? Please, listen to the Spirit and the heart of what I'm going to say here because this is very important because I don't want people misunderstanding what I'm going to say here. So again, think about personal, not about others, us. The name devil, you know what it means? It means slanderer. Mm -hmm. Actually, the accuser of the brethren. Some translation would say the slander of mm -hmm. the brethren. Mm -hmm. All right. As such... This is one of the most effective tools that the devil uses in destroying relationships. Mm -hmm. And what are those? Slander, judging, and also, what's the other one that I said? That's slander, judging, and gossip. Mm -hmm. He is called the father of all lies. That means the father of all slanderer. Mm -hmm. If we are not wise, again, worldly wisdom versus godly wisdom, we're going back to this. Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> About James. So, and here's what it is. I'm going to read this to you and you're going to be shocked. All right? But it's the it's a good truth. It's not like shocking because, you know, and, and, and this is very important. Okay? If we are not wise, the devil could use us to destroy relationships around us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me read this. As so I'm reading some of this, this is some of the commentaries and, and had their, um, the two kinds of wisdom. The worldly wisdom, for such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it's earthly and spiritual and of the devil. For where you have envy, selfish ambition, there you disorder and evil practice. This is very important. Slander, that's James chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Slander is one of the greatest poison that someone could inject into a relationship. Talk about your family, talk about your friends, mm -hmm. church, hello. Mm -hmm. 
because of its poisonous power. Again, the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most used and favorite weapon of the devil mm -hmm. because he is the father of all lies. He's the slanderer. The devil means slanderer. Okay? So it is very important. There are, okay? And let me just read this. Remember, we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of evil, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Satan knows that slander destroys relationships. Mm -hmm. It splits churches, poisons friendship, and fractures family, families. So what's the fruit? Where well, there is a slander, there is always relationships that are destroyed. Very important. Mm -hmm. So that's the fruit. That's why God doesn't like it. Because it destroys. Churches are destroyed because of uh, slander. Friendship are destroyed because of slander. Mm -hmm. And again, when I talk about slander, it's either blatantly lying, exaggerating the truth, distorting the truth. It's the same. And God doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. It is not. Mm -hmm. Okay? So are you still thinking? Yeah. No. All of you are processing at yeah. this moment. And I understand Actually, that. we're all ready to repent. Now. Okay. So just uh, <laughs> let's move on because I'm uh, just ready. <laughs> really ready. <laughs> and uh, yes, and I already repented. <laughs> um last sunday and continually as i was preparing this message just like what i said said we are all guilty about this in in certain levels in certain magnitudes but yes and i think it's a timely reminder for all of us it is then the question is how to overcome how yeah. to protect ourselves mm -hmm. and i think saying all of this without yeah. this yeah. i think it just means nothing That's then good. how mm -hmm. Here's the, pers the personal application here. Again, personal. How to protect ourselves from slander. So how the best way to become the people who are not the people of God that's going to watch over each other. We might ask, here's some several questions. I'm going to give you descriptive instead of prescriptive. Very important because again, several applications for all of us. So in your any situations, I think some people says that you should think before you speak. But I think you should ask questions before you speak is better. Because even if you think and if you don't know what to think about, then... So when people approach you in your situations or you, here's some, some questions. The first one is, have you shared your concern with this person directly? When speaking about someone, have you shared your concern with that person directly? So when someone approaches you, ask that question. Have you shared your concern with this person directly? If not, I'll be willing to go with you to talk to him. And I think that stops when you do that. That's why when people approach me, I always ask them this question. So before I hear everything that you're going to say, are you willing to repeat that in front of the person that we're going to talk to after we talk? Because the goal is reconciliation. The goal is for relationship that is destroyed to be mended or to be mended, not to destroy or to create more gaps. Mm -hmm. Because that's not the goal. Another question when someone approaches you, just to be clear, is this information is something that I should know? Part of the solution, part of the problem. Is this something that I should know? If not, Here's another. Do you want me to help you pursue reconciliation? Because again, if we talk and in the guise of, you know, I'm just sharing, you know, I'm just pouring out. But the reality is how many times when we said those that we're going to pray that we really actually prayed and pursued reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. And as I have read so many articles about this before preaching today and, and also the seminar that we attended in Florida, because of the pandemic, people are kind of like detached a bit. And because of the social media, 
people now are more brave in writing and saying things that would they would not usually say in front of people. Mm-hmm. In a sense, there is that sense of Im- courage, mm-hmm. but misplaced. We have to be careful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there are times when it's necessary to discuss information that is damaging to someone's information. There are times. Mm-hmm. And which is someone's, uh, someone's reputation. reputation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's not slandering. There are times. This is very important because I don't want you to think like, okay, so all of this, I cannot talk to, you know. No, 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 there are times. There are some times that there, this is called for, okay? Remember, you know, slander is uh, what? The motive. It, the motive is to destroy for the sake of destroying. But this one is not because you have to share the truth. But the truth might be damaging to someone, but it's very important. So that means, where, when is this, you know, number one, when there's a refor- reporting that uh, there's a, uh, you are the actual witness, that you have witnessed a crime, that you have witnessed, you know, your first-hand information. Then, what do you do? Either another one is report to the authority, there's a civil authority that it was in place, you know, elevating it to the church leadership. But whatever the decision is, we have to abide. It's very important. Okay? Okay? The other one is discreetly and without unnecessary details. Okay? Making sure that we approach the right people. Mm-hmm. Part of the solution, part of the problem. Mm-hmm. Okay? And also, when you're not sure, seeking pastoral counsel to navigate complex situations. The right people, when you go up to resolve, not to go down to destroy. Mm -hmm. Those are very important. Remember, the motive here is very important. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's read some few comments here. Clang says, if or if we are not part of the conflict, then we can be the arbiter to bridge the gap. Yes! Mm -hmm. Instead of throwing the gasoline to ignite the fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me just summarize. So a lot of you are quiet today. I know you're processing this. I know you're listening. So the viewership is up. I hope you are watching because you are reflecting personally, but you are not using all of the things that I'm saying today as a weapon against someone because that could be, again, exaggerating the truth or distorting the truth. The goal here is for you to reflect upon the Word of God. Personally. Personally. Mm -hmm. Here's the summary. Slander is alive today. Because the enemy is real. Mm -hmm. The devil is real. His name devil means slanderer. So slander is destroying families, destroying friendship, destroying churches, ministries. And the father of all slander, oh, enjoying the whole thing. Enjoying the whole thing. Sometimes we don't know. We We might be unintentionally doing the enemy's work. Because we are using his weapon to destroy someone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is unintentional, but sometimes it is intentional. Mm -hmm. Because we know our motive. Mm -hmm. So I think we should take the moment and reflect. And respond now as a church and how Mm -hmm. we're going to do this. Myra says, I have experienced and heard things about people telling me that another person is quote-unquote bad. I always tell myself, and this is my mindset, unless I have experienced it myself, I will not judge a person because different people have different interpretations of things. Who am I to judge someone based um, on what other people tell me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very important. But I guess at the end of the day, even if you've experienced it yourself, we still are not supposed to judge people but we can you know correct. we're here to correct yes, yes. because the again, intention again the intention, the intention is correct is i mean that's why healthy correction so again we're not saying that if because if the if i don't want us to have this atmosphere of fear that okay i, I I'm, I'm not gonna say anything is because it might be slandering no, no 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 if you witness something that is wrong then talk to the right people that's very important number two is that if you know that person, again, don't slander. But healthy correction is speaking the truth in love. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. 
Why is this very important to the Lord? Because slander is, again, if you read the Bible, causes division in the church. Mm -hmm. And Paul writes so many things about this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And that's why, as always, either he asks people to stay away from those who are divisive. is because, here's what it is. This is kind of like, it spreads like fire and affects a lot of people. Yeah. Because God places, why? Why? God doesn't want this because God places a high priority upon unity among church according to Ephesians maintain what? unity any movement to divide any relationship like church or families by slanderous accusations and speech is simply mm -hmm. not from God not we are called as a church to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace for the glory it is rampant. Mm -hmm. It is kind of like acceptable, but not to the believers. Mm -hmm. God doesn't want that. Wow. Let's this read this. Mm -hmm. uh, Myra says, just like what Lara mentioned, it is how you handle the truth. Yes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. All right. Any comment and reaction from everyone who's watching today? Yeah. And um, so far, there's a lot. And as you could see, you know, there's yeah. a lot of things that we talked about today, a lot of things that we kind of like clarified. We define what uh, slander is. Mm -hmm. We have indeed uh, pinpoint the cause and the heart of, at the very heart of slander is an arrogant heart. And at the end, the fruit is actually relationships that are destroyed. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to our relationship with God, have you noticed even with the things that all that we have done, things that we have done against the Lord, but His heart is always to restore the relationship. We are the one always running away from Him, and He was the one, He's always the one extending grace. Mm -hmm. Even though He could judge us right and just, because not only that He could see us, but also He could see our motive as well. Mm -hmm. Let's read some few more. Lara, Myra, Angela, in this situation, I often wonder about their motive. If I ask, if asked but not answered, I too can't judge them. My responsibility would be my own judgment, not theirs. We can't slander those who slander. Yeah. Mm, very interesting verse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why. We can't slander those who slander. slander, those who slander. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're, we are guilty in some point. Mm -hmm. And I think, just like everyone already said, guilty as charged, mm -hmm. we should repent. Yes. Amen.